Yeah, Virtual Pool 4. It launched uh, August 15th. And, uh, you guys really got to check this thing out because it is phenomenal. It's nothing short of phenomenal. I personally can't wait to get in there and start, uh, you know, improving my game because I can see already how playing it is it's definitely going to be a first game. Yeah, it, uh, it's really got something for everybody. Uh, if you're more of a novice, just hitting balls on it will help you learn how to aim and see what things look like. If you know you play a little better, there's a lot of things in there to help you learn how to move the cue ball better. We have video lessons with Steve Baking, who's a pro and a trick shot artist. Uh, we have a lot of training aids in the game. Uh, it has things like ball tracking where you can uh, turn on tracking lines and see the paths of where all the balls go and then you can like move the q-tip around on the cue ball and see how it changes the paths and things that you know you can't do on a real table. Yeah. Yeah, you know, if you're if you like to play games, it's a great game. If you're in the pool and you want to make your pool game better, uh, it's a it's a great tool for helping you with your pool game. And uh, we've got online. We're going to release next year, and uh, we're actually going to be running a lot of online tournaments. We have some uh, very good real life players that play virtual pool. Um, one of our testers has uh, has a uh, real life 147 run on a snooker table. Now, for those of you that don't make play snooker, 147 is the highest score you can get. It means that you made the red and then the black every time and ran out. And uh, very few people in the world have 147 runs and this is a guy that you know he likes to play virtual pool he like he plays online a lot it's so, you know it was, it was amazing when i found out that this guy had a 147 run it just it just blew my mind and and an, another one of our testers has several century runs so i mean these guys are good players I, I don't know what my high run is in snooker. I don't think I've maybe 60 or 70 points. I don't know, you know. Yeah, I haven't. It's it's a lot different. Just pocketing the ball is hard on the snooker table. <laughs> Oh, it's a great game. You know, very popular in the UK. They play at uh, Fairmount in Canada. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a little tough in here. I mean, there's a lot of people in here, and uh, yeah, that was getting too because I was not. I didn't have enough focus going on, and the people were walking. You know, established table for us to laugh, and that's not good. I was walking. That's always good when your opponent's shooting. Uh, you know, go sit down and and uh, you know, get out of the way. Let him do his thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's not terribly good pool etiquette. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, there goes Jerry Lynn, the guy that beat me. And <laughs> I'm not because he beat me. <laughs> no, I can't do that. Jerry's one of my good friends, and uh, it's tough playing friends in these things. Yeah, he does do my teeth. He's my dentist. He's my friend. And yeah, no. Well, you know, it's funny because he became my friend before he became my dentist. And, uh, yeah, I was like, you know, and he's a very good dentist. Today is a tournament. Well, I guess when you have kids and all that other stuff, pool may not be your number one priority in life. run out here. He just took a couple pockets, uh, balls out of the pocket, which is a, not a bad idea with these drop pockets. And, uh, you know, he's trying to hold the cue ball. You got two choices in that shot. You try to hold it or you hit it hard and take it across the table and back. Personally, on that shot, I would have hit it hard just because when you, you you try to hold the cue ball and you're sitting there hitting it with low and you're putting English on it and trying to throw it. Right. Yeah, all it takes is a little off speed or you hit a piece of chalk on the ball and you end up missing it. Now, at six foot seven, do you ever use a bridge? Not too much. Uh, there's a few places, but I have an extension. So, you know, the extension. Yeah. <laughs> The only time I really need to use the bridge is if I get in one of those places I need the extension, but there's balls in the way. to six and we're playing the same sort of handicaps with nine ball race to seven so if you were giving up four games in a race to seven you're now that's giving right. up four in a race to six and uh, you know that's a lot harder giving up four in a race to six that one, one game is uh Oh, 
it's basically um, what this New World Billiards plays for nine ball. It's the same rules. We're playing the nine ball rules with ten ball. Yeah, it is going. Well, the handicap makes a lot of difference in the speed. Now this this kind of shot, this is the kind of shot that you think you should make all the time, but this is a touchy little shot. Okay, so not right in the throat. Good shot. Can't hear me. Is this mic not turned on? Is there? I've been having a conversation with myself. <laughs> they said they can hear me, but barely. They said. Really? So, and uh, can you guys can you guys let me know how the volume is now? Is that any better? I didn't think there was an on-off switch to this. So. Yeah, well, we had the uh, volume bars up. It looked okay. They said it's the same. Is it only Barbara? Yeah, they can hear you fine, Steve. How, how's that? Check, check, double check, double trip, <laughs> double trip. That's better. Okay, great. Okay, well, you didn't want to really hear all the, all the, all the scuttlebutt I was talking about anyway, did you? <laughs> oh boy. Uh, this is an interesting situation here. He's either going to have to cut it back in the corner and go around the table or, or bank it. Well, I would personally play safe, but I don't know whether he's going to do that or not. Ask the audience if that's any better. Ouch. Okay, how's that, uh, audience? Can everybody... Uh, Daniel just did something with the with the mic jack, so... Yeah, oh, so now it says now we're loud. Okay. <laughs> Well, you know that shot he just played was actually a good shot. He's playing a two-way shot. He's trying to leave the cue ball on the rail and uh, bank the nine. Yeah, but then, but you have the possibility of the scratch. Well, you know, he didn't didn't hit it right, but I mean, it, it wasn't a bad idea. All right. Well, this brings Al an opportunity to at least get one on the the wire here. Yeah, it's two to one. All right. Al Garcia on the wire now. Yeah, I think this is going to be a close match. Yeah, well, it could be, you know, especially if, uh, although, if these guys were both playing on their game, really playing on their game, uh, I, I would have I would have to give Al the yeah, the edge Al. on it. But they both play smart, and uh, that that bank shot that uh, Victor shot on the nine was a very savvy play. I mean, it, he didn't he didn't execute it well. He ended up scratching, but that was a savvy to play a two way shot. You don't all see guys that are his braiding playing two-way shots like that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Plenty of action here now. You can whoop at anyone now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe I should do that. I don't know how much whooping I'm going to do today. And the cue ball know, goes flying it. off the table. Now, see, that happens at my house all the time with Daniel. Sir Daniel. Well, no, they've, they've, the audience already knows that. I've, I'm always complaining about, uh, or not complaining, but I'm always amazed that we still have a window or, you know. It's a bad deal knocking the cue ball off the table because it's just <laughs> like a scratch, you know. You're giving somebody ball in hand. Well, he was, having, he was having cue trouble, though, you know. Uh, he, it was, that was basically what was, what was going on. 
So he was knocking quite a few of them off on the break. I've done that. I've hit the slider with the, with the ball before. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we have like little dings in the wall. and <laughs> You know, my idea was to carpet the walls. Yeah. You know, actually just get regular old carpet and put them up the side of the walls. Call it Daniel Proofing? Daniel Proof it. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? <laughs> uh, All right. That was a nice shot. Yes, it was. I I personally have trouble with combos. I think they're all hard. He shot that like it was easy. I ordered a hot dog. I'm starving. Do you want one too? Very nicely played. Um, I probably would have tried to take just a little piece of the one myself. I think that's easier to play it, but you know, you got the cue ball down there. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I may, uh, uh, Al Garcia. My, my. All right. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe the streaming table does. Y you know, well, it does. You know, it's, it's, I think it's just, it's an added component that whether they realize it or not, the idea is that, oh my God, you know, there is a camera and it is being streamed and people are watching this, not just the guy here in the hall. Right. And I think that that, uh, you know, even if they're not fully aware of it, I think it can subconsciously kind of mess with their game slightly. And uh, you have to just ignore all of that, just block that out. But I don't think everybody can do that. That was a nice shot. No. I have times I let a lot of things distract me. I felt pretty comfortable playing on the streaming table, but I did miss some easy shots, so maybe it got to me too. Snooker in our audience says that he would play better in front of the crowd. You know, I'm kind of with him on that. I don't mind that at all. I, I, I like the, yeah. I like people watching and pulling for me, and uh, you know, I, I, I tend to take a little more time and bear down a little bit more because I do know that people are watching so uh, I don't know yeah it is, uh, it I think is it, exciting I think it also just depends on whether you've had any experience in front of cameras before and oh now see this guy that beat me is now playing Reed uh, who's also a hard times regular down there and Reed has finished pretty darn well in, in some of the tournaments around here yeah, Reed's a, a pretty solid yeah, player. Yeah, he's a pretty solid player. He's got a very short little backstroke that, he, you know, he has a little punch punch stroke that he does. But he's pretty effective with it, you know? Yeah, that was a difficult shot. You know, he's too straight. But look at this. To get the cue ball but look at this. Yeah. Just, just locked it right up uh, beside that 10. That was a pretty good roll. It was a very good roll. But he tend, you know, he tends, to, actually, this is going to be interesting for me because both these guys tend to have rabbit's foots in yeah. their pockets, you know, and, and things just go their way. Like little rolls like this or you miss a ball and it goes, you know, two rails and drops into another pocket with shape. You know, you're like, really? <laughs> so you're telling me we're watching the Filipino battle of the rolls? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I'm trying to tell you. They're both going to get the rolls. So I guess it's whose rabbit foot is, is working the, the better. <laughs> yeah. Nice, hit. nice hit. Very nice hit. Look at that. All right. Well, now this is tricky again. Yes, it is. He's, he's on the wrong side of the six ball to get over to the seven. So he's looking at back cutting this because... That's the only way you can get to the seven. The problem here is I think he needs to run into the nine to get the speed right. Somebody in the chat room was asking about the tables here at Plush Pocket, and you have a concoction of tables here. Um, in terms of consistency, that's for sure. They all have little, you know, special things in particular. Yeah, the, the, the table on the front row all the tables on the front row, the first five here, are tighter than the rest of the room. Yes, that's correct. And some of them are, some of them are pretty tight. Table five, uh, in the back of the the end of this row that we're on right here, I believe that's tighter than the rest of the row. But I think that table one has the most oddities. 
Yeah. Uh, these tables definitely have some character to them. They absolutely do. So it's kind of, if you play here a lot, I mean, you get used to the tables. I actually play, usually play pretty well here at Plush. Yeah, um, if, if, if you're normally playing, you know, in rooms with gold crowns, like hard times, and, you know, if you play on these tables, uh, you may have a little trouble at first, because they, they do play different. Absolutely, they do. Snooker in our chat room wants to know, no devil pocket? Um, no, actually, there's no real devil pocket on table one. Uh, although, I personally, this lower left-hand corner here is one that I've had. I, I, I don't ever try to slow roll into any, anything into that pocket. I've, yeah, I've just not had real good luck with that. The table, they'll, they'll <coughs> a little roll in them not much. I think the... The thing that's toughest about the corner pockets is that they're tight enough that if you're going to hit a ball hard down the rail, uh, you need to hit it pretty clean because they will rattle. Yes, that's true. Well, I'm going to let Daniel get a little lunch here going, and then um, I will probably take a break and put him back on. And then I will go get something uh, to eat myself since I'm, it's getting to be that time. And uh, I had my fire dog. You're, you, oh, you had, you did get your fire dog. Now, I've been coming to the plush pocket since <laughs> 1980, and I've had fire dogs here <laughs> since 1980. It's basically a spicy hot dog. Yeah, and I don't do the spicy so well, so. Well. Okay, well, there we go. Al Garcia takes another one down, and I believe that'll tie the score up. Yeah. Get into He's my administrative duties handicap. here. What's that? He's gotten rid of the one-game handicap. Uh, yes, he certainly has. Victor had a game on the wire. Does anybody say that anymore? Game on the wire? Oh, yeah, yeah. That comes out occasionally. I, I throw that out every now and again, you know, just because. You kind of, you can't, uh, you know, it's just one of those just things. Just in case that anybody's wondering, yeah. where that term came from is, Old time pool rooms used to have a wire above the table with well, scoring beads on. What do you mean? Well, yeah. What do you mean used to? Well, some of them still do. Most rooms don't have a, a scoring wire anymore. Well, that's true, but there, some some certainly do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's still rooms around that have that. I like it. Yeah. It's I cool wish. I wish they. There. I wish all of them had that. Well, the great thing is, is that that you can be sitting and look around the room and see the score of all the matches. That's right. That, that's right. You know, you can do that at hard times. They have uh, a little bit unconventional. They're like plastic golf balls on a wire, but same sort of idea. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, so also somebody wanted to know when is POV Pool going to be coming back to stream hard Maybe times? Tomorrow. To stream hard times? Maybe tomorrow. Uh, Daniel Bush says maybe tomorrow. Um, for sure, we usually try to do the first Sunday of the month. Uh, so we'll we'll see how that goes. And uh, do you win that Tad Cup T-shirt at uh, the Tad Cup, Daniel? Door prize. Just missed out on the queue. Daniel came in third. First place was a tad queue. Oh, that's right. He, and he was he was jonesing for that queue too. Yeah, that's pretty good. Came very close. Pretty good prize. Played very well in that event. Um, actually, we both played very well, but Daniel really really had a shot at winning that winning that tournament for sure. Now we don't know whether they'll let him play next time. You know, he may have uh, shot himself out of a of a place. Yeah, All right. Well, he's lined up on this. He's going to run this one ball down. Oh, he went for the ten, the cheese meister. Well, you know, not a bad play. It didn't. It did not look like that's what he was going for. To me, the way he was lined up, it looked like he was going to just. You know, that's a. It's a little deceiving. Rating and 
you know, chances of running out aren't very, I think going for the 10 ball is actually a pretty smart play there. Oh, did he foul? He fouled lining up for it. Al Garcia. I'm not well, sure he hit a rail. Well, there's worse things that worse things that he could have done, though. I mean, well, let's see if Victor can prove. There's still a but. Well, there's still a bunch of balls on the table. I mean, until the balls are all down, anything can happen. Let's see if Victor can run this rack out. I, I don't think. I don't think he is. Him, but no. You never know. I don't. Uh, he's already out of line. I don't think he can see enough of the three to make it in the corner around the four. Maybe I'm wrong. Hard to tell. No, maybe he can. Oh, yep. Never oh, mind. That's trouble. But then now look. He's butted right up a little close to the work. If he's straight in, he might be okay. All right, well, good shot. Now what's he looking at? He glanced uh, over he at the other happy, side. But I think that was all he was going to get out of that, unless he wanted to jack up on Well, I, yeah, I don't know. I'm always like, here, I'll shoot it for you. <laughs> yeah, well, that's not a bad place to be. <clears throat> Except for you didn't really want to do that. But uh, yeah, this still isn't too bad. When the balls are close like this, those kind of cut shots you really should make. Oh, you know, yeah. The bridge and the balls are close. And well, unless you're being streamed on the streaming table and are a little nervous. And now, this could be a problem. Well, well he's going to come. He's going to have to come back off that side rail and come back out for the eight. And he doesn't want to come too far. Can you see the seven? Um, I, I think so. Yeah, and I think he's looking at that. I think he's lining that up. He wanted to get the cue ball over another side of the table. Then it was easy. He just hit that six at the wrong speed. Yeah, I think he is playing it off the... Nope, he had enough of it. But see, now this is a problem. He's. I think he's a little jacked up over this 10. Maybe uh, not. He's, it's close. Okay. He's but he's just going to have to... To tip this ball in to hold it for that nine. Oh, I guess he can get the side. I, well, now what did we say about him running out? Looks like he's well, that's commentator's <laughs> curse. You do know that. You do know that that's what happens. Happy. That was the, the, the curse in the positive direction. Yeah, the, well, that's true. That's true. It's not, but the last ball's not down yet, Steve. I'm just telling you. That's uh, true. <laughs> But he'll probably prove us wrong, I'm sure, because. Well, this is not a shot he should miss. Like I said, it's a commentator's curse. Oh, well, oh. now, see, there you have it. It's that last ball, man. Yeah, that's uh, painful. Run the whole rack and then uh, miss that kind of shot. All right, so. Jumping back in to the commentary booth right now is going to be Mr. POV Pool himself, Sir Daniel Bush. So uh, I'm going to turn my headset over and let these guys take it. Daniel, you've been nice. I'm going to go find some food. Yeah. All right, uh, can you mark another game for Al? I don't want to touch your setup. How you doing, Steve? Good. Chilling out, huh? Just chilling out. I'm not in the tournament anymore, so. Another game for Al or Victor? Al. Victor ran out from the one ball and then missed the 10. Really dogged it. It was uh, wow. really a ball he should have made. So he's probably not real happy right now. I don't think he's on suicide watch yet, but. <laughs> I 
But I predicted this would be a good match, and uh, Victor's going to need to pick it up if that's going to happen. Grinding away a little, huh? Yeah, well, you know, Al is, uh, <laughs> Al is a decent player, you know. I mean, he can play really well sometimes. If he starts playing well, he's pretty tough. Yeah, when he's good, he's good. He's, he's right on. I mean, I usually have to spot him two or three games, and I'll tell you what, uh, that's not really That's, that that's not easy. Thing. That's not easy. He's, uh, he plays better than his speed rating, I think. Of course, Victor's pretty savvy for his rating, too. Yeah, yeah. I think Victor just uh, tends to shoot a little too fast. Uh, you know, this this said he's just missed some balls that, you know, he probably shouldn't miss. Yeah, that was a nice uh, little combo there. Al shoots combos well. Yeah, well, he's the kind of guy, he, he looks he looks at where the uh, the first ball is going to go off the off the combo, you know. He plays he plays the, uh, the cue ball really well based on that. Yeah, they just seem easy for him. Maybe that's my problem. I think they're hard. <laughs> God, I played Dave Thompson, and he missed, like, two easy combos on the 10 ball. Like, really easy. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm still in this. Of course, you know, I'm, I am I lose it, though. You know, I can't play today, so. Yeah, Look at that shot. It's going to be a struggle, but, you know, that's why we love it. Yeah. What do you think here? You think you might just uh, play the carom into the 7 ball? I think so. Seven balls stuck in the corner there. That's what I do here. I play the game. Hopefully that two ball will hit the six. And then he'll... Uh, nope. Oh, no. He went for the shot. He went for the shot. You know what? He missed it good. He played, missed the pro side of the pocket. Yeah, but I didn't like that play because he's going to leave a tough shot on the six. Even if he hit a little yeah. better. No, you're right. If he'd have made that uh, four... It would put a lot of pressure on him. Now this I'd shoot because if you miss it, you're probably going to be safe. He's got to watch out though. Oh well. Don't need to talk about that. So that's a sellout in my book. Yeah, you got to miss that on the thin side if you're going to miss it. Or very very small on the big side. You know, when you're short, this kind of stretch shot is a little touchy. Now, there you go, you see? He just shot that so quickly, you know? He didn't... Well, you gotta wonder, you know, when he's reaching so far, why he doesn't get the bridge or use an extension or something. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's just that kind of taking that kind of time will it means the difference between winning and losing, you know. Yeah, if you get careless and cool, sometimes you can be too careful and kind of knock your game down. But there's a happy in between where you're paying attention, but you're not being overly concerned. Wow. Those kind of shots with the object balls in a pocket, that's something everybody should practice a lot. Because yeah. Those come up all the time. And, uh, you know, it's easy to pocket the, the ball. The, the <laughs> key is, is how are you going to move the ball? That's right. Kojak in the subway. <laughs> a contribution from uh, our man Snooker in the chat room. Yeah. Kojak in the subway. I think that uh, of all the mistakes that I see people make on the pool table, that's that's the one that probably makes wow. me the worst. Is when balls are hung in the pocket and people don't know how to move the cue ball from it. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it happens all the time in pool. Well, because you can cheat the pocket, so there's so much leeway to cheat the pocket and 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 control the cue ball. You know. It, well, if you watch the better players play those shots, yeah. what they tend to do is, is they tend to play them without using a bunch of English. Uh -huh. They just take more or less of the ball. 
Yeah. Sometimes you have to use English, but you know the 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 better players try to simplify it, where they're not doing anything fancy. Absolutely. I watched Efren one day uh, after one of his buddies did that on a shot like that with mm -hmm. a bunch of spin, and I watched Efren afterwards showing him how to shoot that, shooting it with no English. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, different or, pieces of the ball to move the cue ball around. Yeah. So if Efren says do it that way, then that's pretty good, good advice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I agree. There's a whole science behind, you know, behind that scenario. And it's really one that should be like, if you really want to get seriously good at pool, um, that is definitely one of the uh, one of the one of one of the places you 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 know you end up a lot in pool. That shot, those shots come up a lot. And uh, you know when you're not playing somebody, it should all be all those shot. That shot should be practiced from all different angles. Yep. You know, create obstacles for yourself. And try to get around those obstacles in uh, in whatever way you can. And the great thing about practicing that shot is that you know you don't have to worry about making the ball. It really lets you focus on moving the cue ball. Exactly. Oh, good shot by Al. Nice little bit of draw there, but yeah. I don't really see this. I don't really see this this rack panning out. This is a shot here. I mean, he's got a chance to pull he needs, things up a little here. If he can make this and get on the floor. He needs to put a lot of inside spin. There you go. He bumped. Yeah. That's exactly what he needed. He bumped the 10 out of the way. Yeah, now all well, of a sudden this rack looks a lot easier. Okay. Barbara, the barbecue is about to go uh, get into action right now. Yeah. Her fish, she likes to say. Pescado. El Pescado. El Pescado, exactly. Well, the six ball is the hardest ball on the table right now. And look at Al. Al has caught a little bit of a gear, I think. Al's got, uh, you know, Al's got some cue ball movement. That was here. beautiful. Yeah, that was beautiful speed. The three ball is the whole key to his rack. That play made on the three ball opened everything up. Well, now the eight ball looks a little tricky. Yeah, I mean, he's, he could play it, come up a little short and play it in the corner. I like bringing the cue ball back where he is now for an eight in the side. Uh, that's an option, too. You know, just hit it with a little inside follow. Yep, that's what he tried to do. He missed the ball. He did miss the ball. And Victor comes back to the table smiling. I'll tell you, that's really frustrating is when you have a tough table. You deal with the difficult parts. You get everything opened up. Uh -huh. All you have to do is make a few balls that are all unopened. <laughs> and you do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, That's look at this. Gives it right back. Look at this. Well, this is no picnic, though. No, this is uh, time to play. Soon. I'm laying up, yeah. yeah. Exactly. The safety's a little touchy, though, I think. Let's see if he, what he decides to do here. He's going for it. Look, it goes. You couldn't hit that ball any better. That was a great shot. It may not have been quite as close to the rail as we thought, but that was still a hell of a shot. Well, it was, yeah, it was still no, it was no gimme. Oh, look at that. Now, what is that phenomenon? <laughs> I don't know. In golf, we call it ab food. Make the, make the easy one and, and or make the hard one and miss the easy one. What the hell is that, man? We're all guilty. Oh, yeah. What do you call that in golf? Ab food. Ab food. What's the meaning behind that? Is there a, yeah, a punchline to that? Birdie frick up. <laughs> After birdie frick well, up. There you go. It's a little different than that, but it's close. That was close. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's when you get a birdie, and then on the next hole, you take like a double or a triple. Yeah. That's pretty interesting. Same thing in pool. You make a great shot, and then you dog it. Yeah. I dog the easy one. 
Well, you know, a lot of times, I'll tell you, I used to do that a lot where I'd make a great shot and I'd start feeling really good and celebrate kind of internal celebration. Uh huh. And I learned that, you know what? You, you don't want to do that. Make a shot, just go to the next one. That internal celebration is like, you know, a death knell. You're just asking for, you know, because you're distracting yourself. Sure, sure. Look at this. Ooh, that almost didn't go. Uh, Al's really in the driver's seat now in this match. What is that? Is that five to two now? Uh, I think it's it's four to two, if I'm not mistaken. But I've been wrong before. Race to six here. You're watching the first annual Gary Blower's uh, memorial event here at Plush Pocket in Northridge. I'm sitting here with Steve Chaplin. Uh, this is Daniel Bush. You're watching Point of View Pool. And uh, there are a lot of other great streams going on today. There's a great Southern Billiard Tour streaming. Uh, the Turning Stone event is going on right now in... Uh, what is that? Where is the Turning Stone? Gosh, I'm losing my mind. It's on AC. You mean where exactly? Yeah. Uh, Turning Stone's... Uh uh, resort in New York. Oh, in New that's right, New York. And uh, in Verona, yes. Thanks, Bacon. And we are here in sunny California. Playing 10 ball. And uh, Steve... And I are watching, we're looking at the bracket right now. It looks like Donnie Mills and Mar uh, Mario Mora. Corey Duell versus Sean Putnam. Oh, that means Oscar got sent to the one loss side. Okay, I think Oscar was playing Shane earlier today. And Raj Hundal is going to be playing Tom uh, D'Alfonso. Mike DeShane against Rodney Morris. That'll be a good match. Yeah, super match there. And that's that's the winner's side. Yeah, let's see where Oscar is. See if Oscar got by Shane. Well, it looks like we lost John Mora to Stevie Moore, who's uh, getting ready to play Brandon Schuff. That'll be a good match. Johnny Archer still lives and faces Oscar Dominguez. Oscar Oscar knocks out Shane Van Boning 9-5. Yeah, Oscar and Johnny will be a good one. I think that's a little bit of a tough match for Oscar because he has so much respect for Johnny. But I think yeah. he's played him enough time. He's, he's probably over that. So, uh, you know, hopefully he can, he can get that one. Looks like Hunter Lombardo uh, got knocked to the one loss side by Raj Hundal, and uh, he uh, actually beat Warren uh, Kiamko and is getting ready to play or is playing Ron Casanzio right now. And Jeremy Sose is playing Matt Craw. Ah, now Matt Craw, uh, he's one of the pros we have on Virtual Pool. Oh, that's right, Matt Virtual Pro Pool. Virtual Pool Force. Yeah. Yeah, actually, he's a good, good player. He plays a lot on, I think, the Josh store. But uh, he's an up and coming player. He's been uh, doing very well this year. Yeah, and for those of you who don't know, uh, Virtual Pool 4 was just released August 15th. And actually, I'm sitting here with Steve Chapman, who basically created the game. Well, me and. Uh, a number of other people. We had several artists, several programmers. That's true, actually. That's true. For everything, but uh, it takes a village, right? Yeah, I'm the pool player of the bunch. Yeah, well, it's a pretty damn good game, I tell you. Pretty realistic. Let's say hi to Daffy K. Lori Jones in the house. Yeah, that reminds me. I gotta send Matt a copy of the game. I don't think I did. Matt Craw? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, now how how many pros do you have in the game? It's uh, 86 pros, you all, or 92? Uh, something. Like that. We have well, we have pros and, and top amateurs. They're not all pros. I'd say 
Oh, I don't know. Probably 20 or 30 of them are like full-time pros. And yeah. We've got a bunch of guys that are, you know, really strong players that are semi-pros. Right. You know, and then uh, we've got a number of top amateurs. But, yeah, something like that, 85, yeah. 86. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get Barbara in there in time? Yeah, we did put Barbara in. The, the BBQs in. I'm in there. So what you can do is you can play you can play one of the go into the pro tournament mode, right? Pro tour mode. It's pro tour mode. Basically, what you do is uh, you play a season on tour, and it's uh, composed of several tournaments. And for each tournament, you can win money and ranking points. And if you finish good enough, you can move up a tour. And if you don't finish very well, then you end up getting relegated to the previous tour. And uh, at the start of a season, or when you first start up, you can try to qualify for any tour you want. So there's four tours, the local, the regional, the national, and the world. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you're good enough, you can qualify right up to the national world right out of the, uh, right out of the gate. But as you go up and tour, the players play better. Right, that's true. And if you're going to play in the Just world, like real life. Yeah, you've got to play pretty good. Now, all the pros and top amateurs in virtual pool play on the national and the world tours. Okay. So. Ah, I see. Those guys, you know, you, you've, you've got to move up, step up your game. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's great that you've chosen real life people to become characters in this game. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, it's kind of cool to uh, have Just a second here. What? Real pros and real players involved. Different, different owl. Oh, why? They're done. Oh, oh, that this match is over. Oh my goodness. Just like that, uh, owl takes it down. My goodness. All right. Um, yeah, we can we can stream it. It's up to you. Uh, well, you know, I want you to have a good show. So. Sorry, we weren't paying attention. Uh, all right, guys, we're gonna we're gonna get right into another match right now. So thanks for watching. All right, so Al, Al Garcia. Al Garcia takes that down. What was that? Uh, so. Uh, you were just playing too well. Uh, just stand by. We're gonna have another match. It'll be uh, Bob McGuan versus Al Garcia, who you were just watching. Uh, Bob gives uh, gets three games from Al. So. Uh, stay tuned. Coming right up.